that's Fenster. I'm Eric, and that's a designer carp. And that can only be the work of one man, Ginda. I wanted to go into a profession that would allow me to work in my pajamas, which has, I, I guess that boils down to kidnapping and cartooning. And I didn't have, I, I want to go on record as saying that I am morally against kidnapping. I, he is, quite simply, the mad hatter of Detroit's cartooning wonderland, the baron of the bizarre, the prince of the peculiar, the lord of the loons. In his early 40s, Richard Gindon presides over an assortment of polyester people in a plastic world, a place where high tech is often confused with a cordless toothbrush, a bewildering never-never land that looks remarkably like today. He is a veteran of the 60s underground press, an avant-garde humorist, who now delights the establishment with his insights into the human condition. In short, funny stuff from a funny man. Comedy is, is really, it, it's interesting, you can hear somebody, uh, 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 people, especially Americans, will talk very intimately about themselves. In magazines, they'll say the most outrageous things about their sex life, about being whatever, child molesters, alcoholics. I have never met any human being ever who said he didn't have a sense of humor. I mean, you, nobody will admit to not having a sense of humor because that is the thing that uh, at least theoretically rises us above, you know, the rest of the animal kingdom. And our sense of humor can be quite therapeutic. We, uh, I think within the context of the pages of a newspaper, it's a nice little break. And also they tend to be little posters. And so people can cut them out and put them on the refrigerator or put them on their, uh, their desk at work. And it says something about you. You don't just, it says, I like this cartoon. And it makes three or four statements. One, I like what the cartoon says. Three, I like the way it was said. So that says something about you. It's the same thing as the way we dress, in a sense. Gindon came to the Detroit Free Press from everywhere. No sure, Minnesota was his last stop, but the world has been his home. Given Detroit's less than glamorous reputation, one wonders why he thinks this is a mecca for his particular brand of madness. I really feel it as a cartoonist, I know what I'm doing here. But I can't understand what the rest of you guys are doing for me. <laughs> because it does have a lot of energy. And also, the people of Detroit do have a sense of humor about itself. The one thing I was a little bit worried about, I think, is, is coming into Detroit and making smart remarks about a town that I'm not from. And that hasn't been the case at all. You get letters saying, why don't you make fun of no, our, you know. <laughs> Yes, exactly, and Ferndale and yeah. whatever. And uh, that's my favorite name in Detroit, Ferndale. I just love it. <laughs> like Ferndale. Yes, and I did a cartoon. Why don't you move to Ferndale? Yeah. I think that's probably pretty good, especially if you enjoy working on your car in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, he said that. Gindon is rapidly becoming one of the world's leading experts on something known as Soprinus Carpio, I think. Well, he really had no intention of raising it to such a grand scale, but today, the common carp may be his very best friend. The carp jokes are... Well, the carp jokes really was something that just kind of got out of hand. <laughs> it used to be that I just did an occasional carp joke um, just as a kind of absurdity, as a change of pace, as a mm. something. For some reason, the intensity of it you know, has grown, and I'm really feeling it this summer. The demand for carp jokes is, is uh, I mean, literally people writing and saying, do more. I tend to do more in the summer, spring and summer, and drop off a little bit in the fall and winter. Although there is no season for carp, they migrate. They go to a rather sleazy hotel in Newark, New Jersey, and check in for the winter. And without luggage, I may point out. <laughs> and <laughs> I have, I'm telling you, I have uncovered something that in its implications and ugliness is, uh, I think, <laughs> is there needs a federal investigation. <laughs> Gindon, as you might expect, does not care for labels. To characterize his work would probably take hours with an unabridged dictionary, and then the words might still elude it, but he sees it this way. It, it, it is a, it is a, form of poetry in that it is very simple and quick and often quite personal. And if people like your uh, cartoons, it's because they feel you think the way they think. They just feel a kindred spirit. And if you're lucky and if your insights are general enough to meet a wide enough audience, I think it works. Uh, 
that's, that's the thing that we nurture, is the reinforcement that we're all in this kind of insanity together. And we are not alone with whatever those fears and, and, and doubts and things are that we go through life. I'm Eric Smith, Channel 7 Action News, reporting.